We live in the state of Iowa that is the most altered landscape in the entire world. There is nobody that changes their landforms more on a consistent basis than we do. It is more endangered than the Great Barrier Reef, than the tropical rainforest. We have 35 million acres in this great state. When we came here, we had 30 million acres of prairie. Now we have 350,000 acres of prairie. So again, the most altered landscape. If we don't figure out a way to get active into our land and start restoring our habitat and bringing natives and biodiversity back in, we're gonna lose it. And we've already lost so much of it. Right now is the point where we need to start taking action and creating this more native and acceptable landscape. I'm Caitlin and I am the Outreach Coordinator with Dubuque County Conservation, but I also coordinate the Mowing to Monarchs program for the County Conservation Board in the Dubuque County area. Mowing to Monarchs is a program that we do to guide landowners with resources, tools, and workshops to convert a section of their turf grass over to pollinator habitat with native flowers and grasses. Not only does it provide habitat for pollinators and different species that we want to see in our city. I think the biggest win is that it connects people to nature. It gets people excited and then that hooks them into other efforts that we might have. I have heard people talk to me at length about caterpillars they saw in their pockets and then what it's going to turn into and then they started doing research and then they found out that they're really endangered. It sort of steamrolls into a larger environmental movement which is really great for what I do. Mowing to Monarchs started in 2019 during a COVID year when all sorts of people were starting to look at their yards differently. The only place you could go is by sheltering in place and you went outside your door and you said, hey, what can I do with this green space? And there's so many things that you can do with your yard. The unfortunate thing is that most people's yards is Kentucky bluegrass. And Kentucky bluegrass is great. It has a purpose in some ways, but it's not native to our current environment. Uh, so there was so many other things that you can do with native species to bring in all sorts of biodiversity to this area. I live in a neighborhood that backs to a nature trail. And for me, I just wanted to bring some of that nature that I felt growing up on a farm um, into my yard in the city. It was the first time I've ever planted native plants on purpose and in mass, and it worked great. The coaching was essential to kind of get the confidence to be able to do a small patch. And then the ongoing support, I, I did a garden every year since the program started, and I've just loved it. Doing things that help encourage pollinators, probably in our case, probably mostly different kinds of bees, is nice. I also have some fruit apple trees and plum tree and a pear tree, and I, I, I need those around to make sure that those get pollinated. All of those things are really additive and uh, just creating the sort of food source that they can use that they just don't get when it's just having grass that you mow. When enough people build these small strips, these small pocket prairies, it becomes a kind of interconnected system where it allows the pollinators to find their way and make their long journeys by having small stops along the way. We can't contribute to the entire journey of these pollinators, the monarchs travel these great distances, but we can provide this small pocket of hospitality along their journey. My daughter's actually asked, why do we have so many lightning bugs in our yard and none of our neighbors do? So I got to actually have that conversation with them and like talk about such a neat memory as a child yeah. to be able to go out and chase lightning bugs. And it was a small thing we could do and enjoy while also bringing back such an awesome memory for future generations. Native bumblebees have been so much fun for me to watch and to learn and to see the different types, um, the wasps, the moths at night, um, just the incredible diversity. Things are changing in Dubuque and everywhere throughout the world, and we need to A, make sure we're protecting species, and B, um, it's not only for human enjoyment, but also for human vitality. And so having diverse species, having these prairies, using less pesticides, whatever extra step might happen because of these pocket prairies, that's what we want in Dubuque. And so the more habitat we can create within Dubuque, the more diversity we'll see in our species, and that makes it better for humans. You do hope that the ripple effects take hold in a community and it starts to change the culture of a community. What do we value overall? Do we ultimately value something like a 
something pristine and monoculture, or do we ultimately value this, this biodiversity and vibrancy? And I hope it does start to change the culture in our town. If you're on the fence, apply. Do it, apply. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely apply. It, yeah. is, it is fun, it is beautiful. And it, we're, we're here to help. We're here to help. Yeah. Like We love doing this kind of stuff, as do many participants. If you're unsure or overwhelmed, I guarantee you'll have 20 people at your doorstep willing to help you yeah. in a minute. In a minute, <laughs> yes. I want to teach people something, I want to form a sense of community, and I want to leave an impact. Because I love nature, and I love conservation, and I love the idea of restoration, that's my impact. That's what I'm passionate about, that's what my drive and motivation is every day. Mm -hmm.